In this video, I'll discuss where you can buy a cheap $6 Raspberry Pi camera. I'll go through the installation process, including setting up the hardware and software. I'll also discuss a few common problems that you're likely to experience along the way, and tell you a few things to watch out for. Before you try purchasing or installing your camera, be sure you know which model of the camera you have available. Also pay attention to which model of the Raspberry Pi you have. Different versions of the camera are compatible with different versions of the Raspberry Pi. The camera modules are commonly referred to as the version 1 or version 2 modules. These cameras are also commonly referred to by the model number of the image sensor that they use. This is the version 1 module which uses the OV5647 image sensor. This is the version 2 camera which uses the IMX219 sensor. The cheap $6 version of this camera is the version 1 module. You can find it on eBay by searching for Raspberry Pi camera. There are many different options around $5. I haven't purchased from this exact eBay user before, but most of these cheap components seem to come from the same source, but for some reason they sell them under different vendor names. One of the things to be aware of is that the shipping times for these components are extremely long. This says 10 to 46 business days, and that's not kidding. In the most optimistic case, I have had components arrive within two weeks, but generally you should expect something closer to two months. Over the past couple years, I've probably made a couple hundred orders of these cheap eBay components. For the most part, everything has arrived eventually, but I did lose a couple things during the Canadian postal strike. In my case, I'm going to be showing the installation steps for a Raspberry Pi 3 Model B. Here is the slot that the camera cable fits into. You'll note that it's written directly on the board that this is for the camera. There's another similar looking port labeled display. This is not the one we're going to use. Before you try installing the camera cable, take note of the fact that this black part pops up. If you ignore this step and try to force the camera cable in anyway, you'll find that it's very difficult. You'll also run the risk of bending or peeling off these very delicate strips of metal that form the connectors on the ribbon cable. I've had to throw away at least one camera because of these bending off or breaking. These are very delicate. The ribbon cable only requires a small amount of force to be pushed in properly. Once the cable has been pushed in, you can secure it by pushing down the black part. It's worth noting that holding the camera like this will result in pictures that are right side up. Taking pictures in the position that the camera naturally rests will result in pictures that are upside down. Therefore, you'll probably have to attach the camera to something to get pictures that you can make use of. Now that you have your camera installed, let's review how to actually make use of it. I'm going to assume that you already know how to access the terminal on your Raspberry Pi. You can access the terminal either by plugging in a monitor to the HDMI port to access the graphical interface, or purely through the command line using SSH. Another important step before you try using your camera is to make sure all of your packages are up to date. You can save yourself a lot of grief by making sure all the packages you use have the latest bug fixes. In order to get your system up to date, you can do sudo apt-get update. Followed by sudo apt-get upgrade. If this is the first time you've updated your Raspberry Pi, you can expect that this might actually take a while, so make sure you don't unplug your Raspberry Pi while it's doing this. In some cases, I've seen it take up to 30 minutes to finish. First, let's try taking a picture without configuring the camera first and see what happens. Unsurprisingly, we get an error message. Fortunately, the error message explains what we need to do. Run sudo raspbconfig. You can use the arrow keys to navigate around. Select option 5 to enable the camera. Select enter again. And use the arrow keys to navigate to yes. Use the arrow keys to navigate down to finish. If you want the changes to take effect, select yes. Let's select no and see what happens. Unsurprisingly, it still doesn't work. We need to reboot. Now we can try taking a picture again. Note that the light on the camera comes on.
If you don't see any errors and an image file appears, it probably worked. View the image to check and make sure. You can also use the rasbvid command to take videos. The T flag specifies the number of seconds to record for. Now that we're sure we can use the rasbvid command to take still images and the rasbvid command to take videos, let's try using another common tool called ffmpeg. Oh no, it said command not found. You can install it with sudo apt-get install ffmpeg. Now that ffmpeg is installed, we need to make sure the dev video zero device is available. You can check for it by doing ls dev video and star. Looks like it's not available. We can fix this by running this command to enable the kernel module that makes dev video zero available. Running this command will only temporarily enable the kernel module. After your restart, you would need to run this every single time you start up. You can use this command to make sure that the kernel module is permanently available every time on startup. I'll provide a reference to a text version of this command so you can copy and paste it in the description. Now let's check if dev video zero is available. There it is. Now you can use ffmpeg to record directly from the Raspberry Pi camera. This will record continuously until you press control C. And here's our video. Another useful software tool for working with your Raspberry Pi camera is called the Raspberry Raw package. Raspberry Raw, as the name implies, gives you a more raw level of access to the image sensor. You can use this for doing slow motion video or tightly controlling the exposure length of your camera. Now that you know of several different ways to capture images and video using your Raspberry Pi camera, you should be good to start experimenting. For more advanced examples of the syntax of using the RaspBeStill, RaspBeVid, or FFmpeg commands, see the link in the description where I'll provide written documentation that you can copy and paste.